Welcome all to this PYQ session where we are going to discuss questions from NEET PG 2024 paper. A brain stem lesion that affects the gag reflex would involve which nerves? We have discussed in detail about gag reflex in NEET PG 2021 session question number 7. But yes, let's recollect the afferent and efferent of gag reflex. The afferent of gag reflex is the ninth nerve. Okay. On touching the mucosa of the pharynx, the person immediately gags out, right? So the sensation from the mucosa of the pharynx is carried by the glossopharyngeal nerve. And yes, the movement that occurs following the touching of the pharynx, you can see elevation of the soft palate and the uvula in the midline right the muscles of the pharynx the muscles of the soft palate they are innervated by vagus nerve so the afferent for the gag reflex is glossopharyngeal nerve and efferent is the 10th cranial nerve so the brainstem lesion that affects the gag reflex would involve the nerves 9 and 10 so in that NEET PG 2021 20, session we have also discussed what will happen if there's injury to 9th nerve or 10th nerve in terms of gag reflex, right? Please go through it. And question number two, in which type of papilla are taste buds absent? This again is a very frequently asked topic, right? We have discussed in detail in NEET PG 2021, question number three. So we have four types of papillae, foliate, circumvallate, fungiform and filiform. And do you remember the filiform papillae? The tip is keratinized and there are no taste buds. So we discussed in detail about, yes, the features over the dorsal surface of the tongue, the types of papillae, the taste bud location and the nerve supply. Please read about it, right? So the taste buds are absent in filiform papillae. Moving on to the third question, fecal material exiting from the umbilicus is due to persistence of which of the structure from the umbilicus. Two structures we can relate to umbilicus here, the embryological remnant is uraculus and vitello-intestinal duct. So here, can we try to identify the vitello-intestinal duct as well as the allantois? You can make out the gut tube, right? So the gut tube is further divided into foregut, midgut and hindgut. This is the region of the foregut, the midgut and the hindgut, right? So this one here, connecting the definitive yolk sac to the midgut is the vitello-intestinal duct. And this opening into the hindgut is the allantois. The vitello intestinal duct normally it disappears by day 16. Okay. And the anomalies related to the persistence of vitelline duct. Yes, come on, let's see it. Here, the vitello intestinal duct it has disappeared. The proximal part of it it can remain patent that forms the Meckel's diverticulum attached to the Anti-mesenteric border of ileum, right? We have discussed the details of it in our embryology session. And here the middle part of it, of the vitello-intestinal duct, it can remain patent forming the enterocystoma, right? And here sometimes the entire vitello-intestinal duct, it can remain patent causing discharge of the intestinal contents, the fecal material at the umbilicus. This is called as vitello-intestinal duct fistula, where both the ends are open. And here, the distal part of it remains patent and forms a bulge of the umbilicus called the umbilical polyp or the raspberry tumor. And here, the entire vitello-intestinal duct is replaced by a fibrous cord, right? So, the answer for this question, the fecal material exiting from the umbilicus is due to the persistence of 
vitello intestinal duct moving on to the fourth question damage to the encircled area in the given image it affects which of the following so what is the circled area what you see here is the greater wing of sphenoid this is the lesser wing of sphenoid and if i put a probe here through this opening yes it will enter the orbit this is the superior orbital fissure what are the structures that traverse the superior orbital fissure come on it has three compartments right through the lateral compartment remember the structures passing through we have done in a quick revision head and neck lft what is it lacrimal nerve frontal nerve and the fourth cranial nerve trochlear nerve through the intermediate compartment of the superior orbital fissure what are the structures passing through the upper and lower divisions of the oculomotor nerve the abducens nerve and the nasociliary nerve right and through the medial compartment of the superior orbital fissure that transmits the inferior ophthalmic veins the superior ophthalmic veins will pass through the lateral compartment so here yes the lacrimal the frontal nerve are divisions from the ophthalmic nerve the nasociliary nerve is also a branch from the ophthalmic nerve so what are the three branches from the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve the lacrimal the frontal and nasociliary right okay so we know that yes the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve they innervate the skin over the face except over the region of angle of mandible or the skin over the parotid so this part yes over the upper part of the face including part of the scalp the forehead the upper eyelid the bridge of the nose all that is by the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve and the mid part of the face the upper lip the upper cheek the lower eyelid all that by the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve the lower lip the chin all that is by the mandibular division of trigeminal nerve so coming to the options right loss of sensation in the scalp and nose is due to involvement of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve loss of sensation in the nasopharynx involvement of the maxillary nerve loss of sensation in the jaw upper jaw is maxillary nerve lower jaw is mandibular nerve but definitely not ophthalmic nerve loss of sensation in the chin again mandibular nerve so of the three divisions of trigeminal nerve which one is passing through the superior orbital fissure the lacrimal the frontal nasociliary divisions of the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve so for further detailed discussion please refer to question number 3 neat pg 2022 session right option a is the more apt one identify the outer covering of the condition below so what is this condition you see something uh, protruding out in the anterior abdominal wall yes it is exomphalus omphalocele what is that right so normally the midgut loop it comes to lie outside the abdominal cavity during sixth week in the proximal part of the umbilical ring it will undergo further growth rotation and then returns into the abdominal cavity by 10th week if it continues to stay beyond 12th week outside the abdominal cavity that is called as yes exomphalous or omphalocele so here we can see that it is covered by amnion it comes out through the umbilical ring giving attachment to the umbilical cord right due to non return of physiological hernia of the midgut loop 
Something very similar that you can confuse it with is gastrochysis. Here again, you get to see the intestinal loop, but not covered by amnion. And here, it doesn't come through the midline. It comes either through right or to the left of the midline through a defect in the anterior abdominal wall. Right? Gastrochysis. So, in this session, we have discussed the crisp point related to each question. But if you want further details, please look on to quick revision and comprehensive series of the same topic. Right? Hope it was useful. Thank you. Happy learning.